thought I was going to do that and then forgot. All right, so let me start again. Welcome, everybody. My name is Drew. I'm with the Environmental Volunteers, and I will be um, presenting to you today. Um, this is a program on painting with nature. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be looking at um, how you can use natural materials to paint with and make your own paints. Um, we won't be going super in depth on any techniques or anything like that, but it will more be about how you can make paints using um, things in, that you can find naturally, things that grow. Um, I'm also joined by Allison, who is a volunteer with us, and she will be helping me kind of monitor the chat and read off questions, responses, that sort of thing. Um, so I will go ahead and get started here. Um, let me go to present. Hopefully everybody is able to see the screen here. And of course, for those who are still coming in who missed it, um, we do. We are asking everybody remain muted or remain muted because of our audience size. But if you would like to put any responses um, or questions in the chat, please feel free to do so. All right. So um, I'm actually going to get us started with kind of who who we are. We are the environmental volunteers. We're a um, science nature science education nonprofit based in the Bay Area. We do um, programs throughout schools and as well as community programs, which this would be um, just for members of the community. Glad you could join us today. Um, if you would like to check us out after the program, um, our link to our website is right down there. It is um, evols.org. And you can see all the other programs and everything else that we do there. Okay, so um, this is a question for everybody. Um, what does nature painting mean to you? If you would like to put your answers in the chat, please do so. Um, Allison, if you would read a couple off to me. And also, if you can't use the chat for whatever reason, maybe just think of how you would answer this question. So what does nature painting mean to you? Sustainable artistic practices from Laura, forging for materials to paint with, from Rachel and Becky, using renewable resources for paint, mm -hmm. um, starting to come fast, accessible art, using seasonal pigments found in nature, um, used iris and geranium ink and used um, sticks, it's fun. My subject of painting is from the natural world, um, land art, using biodegradable pigments, how my ancestors did it, finding beauty in nature. Yeah, great. Um, those are all great responses. Thank you all so much. Um, so yeah, nature painting can mean a couple different things. Number one, it can just mean that nature is the subject of your painting. So um, you just go out, maybe it's outdoors or maybe it's indoors and whatever you're painting is, um, you're painting the natural landscape there. Nature painting can also mean um, you're actually using nature to paint with. So um, that can be um, that can be the natural materials, some of the great ones that everybody mentioned. Um, you can use both materials for your paints or even to paint with if you want to try that, though that is a little bit more of a challenge. But yes, um, that is all kind of what is incorporated into both um, nature painting and painting with nature. And painting with nature is kind of what we're going to be talking about here today. Um, and yeah, the last thing I did want to touch on here is um, historically nature or natural materials were kind of is what was standard, what was used for painting um, before we had synthetic materials to use. Now, of course, if you go to the store, You'll have a lot of um, synthetic materials, which you'll buy to use it for your paints. But um, previously, a lot of it just was using natural pigments you found out in the environment. So um, today we are looking at what you can use for nature paints. And we are going to be looking at um, some of the basics, just some pretty basic things that you can find. Um, now I did send out a materials list to everybody. If you don't have any of those materials, that's okay. I know some people had trouble getting that email as well. Um, 
However, maybe if you if you don't have the materials, you can get them later, of course. Um, if you do have the materials, there will be an activity portion at the end of the program. But we are going to be looking at some simple ingredients that you can get from a grocery store or a farmer's market. Those include berries, leafy plants, um, spices, and minerals. Um, those are all things that you can use. If you have a garden or yard, that is also a great source of materials. And even some of your indoor plants, although you don't probably want, don't want to strip your indoor plants bare, but um, taking some, some from the indoor plants can work too. Um, but there's a lot of different ways that you can get those natural materials to make your paints. The one thing that I do really want to caution everybody on is that we shouldn't take um, natural materials from our local parks or especially our open spaces. Does anybody want to put in the chat why they think that is? Why don't we want to take from our local parks or open space? So we've got disrupts complex ecology and habitat considered to be vandalism, um, herbicides. Uh, it would deplete the resources and possibly endanger the plants. Um, most of the time it's illegal, plus it's disrespectful. It's not permitted. Um, someone else said it's inter interfering with habitats. And then someone said, um, it's there for everyone to enjoy. And um, if everyone did it, it could deplete the area. Good manners. Yeah, very Share with cool. all. Right, so there's, there's a lot of different reasons why we don't wanna just grab out from the natural environment. One thing I didn't hear is actually just kind of a first, and this is just for you yourself, um, some plants are toxic and deadly. So you always want to make sure that you know what you're touching. You don't just want to grab something and say, oh, I'll use this for nature painting if you don't know what it is, if you don't know whether it's harmful to you or not. Um, in addition to that, and this is what um, people mentioned a lot, is what happens when you take a plant's leaves, its berries or fruit, um, the plant needs its leaves to survive. That's how it photosynthesizes. That's how it makes its own food um, is through the leaves. The berries and fruit are how the plant reproduces. It's how it spreads its seed. Um, and what happens to the ecosystem if you take all this is that um, the plants, uh, that natural cycle is disruptive. Maybe if you take one or two berries, um, that's okay. But any berries you take out of the ecosystem those are seeds you're taking out. Those are the seeds that need to be, um, that need, the plants need to reproduce. So if those seeds aren't there anymore, if they've been taken out of the ecosystem, that natural cycle is disrupted. Um, so it can be kind of harmful in that. And the same with the leaves. If you strip the plants bare, um, they're not going to be able to survive. And of course, we have a lot of participants today. If all of us were to go out to one specific um, park or open space and take all that stuff, then that would be a um, severe disruption. And then of course, this was something people mentioned as well. It's rude, it's disrespectful, and there are laws that prevent taking those natural materials. So um, don't wanna um, be too heavy on this, but again, we just, we encourage you to get things from the store, get things from your own garden, your own home. Um, don't take things from places where you, where you necessarily shouldn't. All right, so why do we want to use nature paints? Um, and this is a question for everybody as well. Can anybody think of any reasons why you would want to use um, natural materials for your paints? Low cost. Another response is connects you to your local landscape. Yeah. Um, someone else said it's biodegradable. It's also non-toxic. Uh, true colors are used to recycle and avoid harmful chemicals. It's nature. Um, we can use nature plants for maybe being creative. Um, someone said it's more sustainable, prevents consumption of manufactured products. Um, someone said it feels right. right. Um, someone else said it's a connection to our ancestors. Someone else said it makes me feel more aware of nature teaches me to respect what I use and be more in tune with the plants. Yeah, those um, here's another all... one, to help reduce contamination chemicals from paint, uh, from, that paints generate. Um, and it's beautiful to do work and commune with nature. 
Right, no, those are all great answers. So thank you, everybody. Um, again, one thing that a lot of people touched on is um, a lot of the synthetics you buy are pollutants. Um, acrylics are an example of that. Um, they are more or less, um, they have liquid plastic in them, which is not great to have in the environment. Of course, I'm not saying that never use acrylics, but um, you do wanna make sure that if you do use those, you dispose of them properly. However, painting natu with natural materials, that is a alternative. Um, and painting with natural materials, number one, it's fun. Um, even if it's less permanent, it's not always as permanent. Um, it is a fun way to do it. Um, experimentation is the key here. It's just kind of experimenting with different things, seeing what works and what doesn't. It is also great for those who like to make a mess. And then of course, one thing that I don't have on here, but something that a lot of people touched on, and again, it maybe has, has some, um, some emotional significance to you, whether you feel closer to your ancestors or closer to the environment that you're working with. It's a great way to, um, to uh, become, I guess, more um, connected with your art, if you will. All right, so we are going to get into um, some of the basics here. And again, um, this is just kind of starting with the basics. This is great um, for a family activity, kids activity. Um, the easy medium for uh, nature paints is using watercolor. So we are going to be using just more or less water-based paints today. Um, there are a couple tools that you will want. Maybe these are some that you were able to gather. If you weren't able to gather them, that's okay. But you will want a brush, um, a paint palette, um, although you don't necessarily need one. I have a paint palette here with me, but um, you can also use bowls just from your kitchen. Um, you will need some water and watercolor paper. And watercolor paper is important because it's um, thicker. If you just use normal paper, um, a lot of times, the, especially the materials we're working with, um, they do get pretty watered down. So you need a thick type of paper um, so it doesn't become too soggy, it doesn't become ruined. All right, now the first thing that we start with and a great um, thing to work with is powders. So these can be um, spices and minerals, um, just whatever comes in a powder already. Um, there's a couple of great examples of things that you can just take from the kitchen. Um, kitchen spices, whatever you have in your spice rack. Um, coffee grounds are great. You can even try using dirt for this. Um, and you will need some hot water to use. Um, and then you will need a, a sieve or a fine mesh strainer. Um, basically something to strain it out. So the technique for this, um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to take your um, spice and mineral, whatever you're using, maybe just um, start with one at a time. Um, you'll want to pour it into a bowl, mix that with hot water, and then drain that through your fine mesh strainer. Um, and by doing that, by mixing with the, it with the hot water, um, you are, the hot water is essentially releasing that pigment into your water for you to paint with. So whatever color your, um, your spice or mineral was, um, you'll be able to actually paint it directly onto your paper. Um, of course, I will say that a lot of this, um, it tends to come out pretty light. Um, so you might wanna try doing it multiple times. So multiple times of um, you, once you've um, poured it, drained it into another bowl, um, you pour more of your spice into that same bowl and then drain it again into another bowl and keep doing that. The more you do it, the more, um, the stronger your color will be. But, um, and then also another trick just to make sure that, uh, to help it being so watered down is you can kind of drain the water off of your, um, off the tip of your brush when you're painting with it. Um, let it let the excess drain a little bit before you paint it onto the paper. So I am going to stop sharing here. Um, Drew, there was a question about the proportions of powder to water. Right. So um, this is what I'm going to kind of get into right now. So um, I am actually going to demonstrate using the spices. I'm not going to demonstrate everything, but um, to start off, I'll. Uh, point my screen down here. I have my plate, I have my work area. Um, if it's somewhere you wanna keep clean, you might wanna put some paper towels. I have a plate here. Um, we'll take our bowl and we'll start. Um, this is the spice that I have to demonstrate with. It's just some paprika, um, just something that I had in my kitchen. 
Um, and you'll want to pour, you don't need a whole lot. You just want to pour just a little bit in there, um, but not too little either. So there's what I have to work with. Um, and then I also have my water heated here, water heater here. Again, you want to make sure the water's hot because that helps release your color more. And when you're pouring the water, you don't want to pour too much water because again, we want the we want the color to be released. We don't want to just be painting with the water. We want the color in there as well. So um, for those who are asking about ratios, it's a great question. Um, I might recommend a one to one ratio, um, maybe a little more water, of course. Um, and the other thing, as I want to remind everybody, is the experimentation here is part of the fun. You um, don't need to be super scientific, super exact about your ratios, especially starting out. Just see what works and see what doesn't and um, have fun experimenting with the ratios that you use. So I poured a little bit of water in there and now I will get a clean bowl that I have right here. And this is my fine mesh strainer and you just pour the water through the strainer into your bowl. The strainer will collect a lot of the, um, the thicker grounds, the thicker amount of your spice, and you'll be left with your water right here in the bowl. And if you want, you can pour this into a paint palette if you wanna work small. Of course, you can just paint with it right out of the bowl as well. So I can move this over to the side. I have a piece of my watercolor paper here. Drew, one of the questions was, if we don't have thick water uh, color paper, is there something else that can be used? Uh, that's a good question. Um, cardstock might be uh, an example of something that you can use. Um, it's just, again, it's like the, the idea with it is you don't want to be painting onto really thin paper because um, if you just paint onto printer paper, lined paper, for example, uh, the water can kind of soak through and your paper gets really soggy. It's not going to be able to last when you're putting a lot of water in it. So that's why you really want a thick kind of piece of paper. All right, so we can just take our brush um, and you can see on here that you can just apply that water that you created just directly onto your paper. And like I mentioned, it is going to come out light. Um, what you can do to kind of what you can do as well is if you want thicker colors onto your paper, you can actually leave it dry, let it dry. It might take a while, but then you can put layers onto it. You can kind of layer your paint to make the color a little more, um, a little darker. So you can see that it's pretty simple. Um, you also don't want to move around the paper too much. It is still pretty wet. Um, but that's how you do it more or less. And I have a piece of paper where I already painted some with this same, just using the paprika. Um, I'll kind of show how you can just paint over it. And that will help your color get a little darker. It's just, you do, the one thing I will caution with, again, is just putting too much water onto the paper because then it can get runny, can get soggy. Um, you do just kind of want to be patient with it. So that is with the spices. That is kind of an example of how you work um, using that. It's pretty basic. Again, this is a um, this is something that you can do as a family thing, just with your kids. Although I would recommend that um, maybe you have a parent help you. Um, if you're pouring the hot water for that part specifically. Um, but that's how you work with the spices. All right, now the next thing that you can use is um, plant leaves. And this is actually gonna be pretty similar. It's not gonna be too different, but this can be things like spinach, cabbage, lettuce um, or other leaves. Weeds from your garden might be a great thing to do. You just take the weed or the leaves from those. Um, instead of just throwing them into the compost, you can use the leaves um, for your painting. Um, you will need hot water again. You will need your fine mesh strainer. 
And then you will also need something to grind with. So in this picture, this is a um, pestle and mortar. This is uh, probably the um, kind of what you'd want to use specifically. Of course, not everybody has this. I don't have a pestle and mortar at home. Um, there are some alternatives that you can use. Um, more or less, you just need something to grind up the leaves. So that could actually be a rolling pin and a paper bag is one way to do it. Um, you could uh, use a blender to grind it up as well. Um, you could even use something that's actually kind of fun is a Tupperware lid that you don't mind getting too scratched up and you can use a rock. So you just put the leaves on the Tupperware lid and just um, grind it with the rock on there. Of course, this will take a while. It's not, the, it's not the easiest way to do it, but it is kind of fun to do it that way. It's just, again, you wanna make sure whatever surface you're grinding on, um, it can get kind of um, scratched up. So the method through this, um, I won't be demonstrating this one, but it is very similar. What you'll want to do is you'll want to grind up the leaves first. Um, you don't, I mean, the closer you can get to the um, kind of what we had with working with the spices um, where it's ground up like that, the better, um, but you don't need to grind them up to that. Um, you don't need to grind them up that fine. However, once your leaves are ground up, um, you'll want to mix it with the hot water, just like we did for the paprika, and you'll want to pour it through your fine mesh strainer. Um, and just like before, you can do this multiple times to help you get a darker color. Now the alternative that is specific to leaves and which is actually a little bit easier um, to do is that you can actually boil the leaves. And um, by boiling the leaves, just grab a, um, grab a pot, just put it on your stove, let the water boil with the leaves inside. Um, by boiling the leaves, you're actually releasing the color as well. And it releases the color a little bit easier because you don't have to, you don't have to grind the leaves up. You just put the leaves into the water um, as whole leaves, and then you let it boil. Um, the timing is something that um, there isn't necessarily a specific on. It's something that you might wanna play with. Um, just boiling it. Obviously, you don't want to paint with boiled water directly onto the paper. So it is something where you boil the leaves, you let it sit, let it cool. Um, and then you can take a look if it's if the color is too light, what you can do is you can add more leaves to that same water and you can boil it again. Um, but if the color is dark enough to where you think you can work with it, um, you can, once the water is cooled, you just pour it out of your pot into your palette or into your bowl and you can paint directly with that. Um, and then again, you'll let, you're left with um, colored water that can go directly onto the paper. And a lot of times the color of your leaves will match the color that you're getting. Um, so a lot of times this is a great way to get your green pigment. Um, of course, there are some leafy plants that you can play with to get other colors as well. I think red cabbage might be a great example of something you can just get from the grocery store. Um, what color that actually makes is it actually makes a bluish purple when you boil it out of the leaves. Um, that's the color you'll get from red cabbage. And then there's also even some advanced things you can do with the cabbage specifically where if you add um, lemon juice, you can actually change the color a bit. It actually, I believe it turns it a little bit pink. So um, red cabbage is a great one to play with. Um, and then finally, in addition to the leafy plants, we just have, we have the berries here. Again, um, this is something you wanna get from your garden or your grocery store, but berries are great because um, the instructions for using berries is just mash and paint. You can even mash them with your fingers. You just wanna mash it up to where you get the berry juice in your bowl, and then you can paint directly with that um, using your paintbrush onto your paper. Okay, so there are a bunch of different things that you can use. Um, there are a couple more things uh, that are great to try. Um, tea bags, you can leave them to soak overnight. Um, that will release the color a little bit. It will be a light color again, but um, you can use that to paint with. Flower petals, oftentimes they're a lot just like the leaves. So it's kind of the same method with the flower petals. You grind them up, mix with hot water, pour through the sieve, and then you have your um, 
your pigment and your water. And then onion skins are ones that you can try as well. And then of course, like I mentioned, um, the thing about nature painting is a lot of it, a lot of the fun of it um, is just in the experimentation. So it's playing with all these different materials, thinking of new materials that you can use. This is kind of the basics of how you might use them. Um, but a lot of it is just playing with these materials, seeing what you come up with, and then learning as you go. It'll be more of a learning process as you, as you use these natural materials to paint with. Now for some advanced tips, um, the, for the better water quality or for better watercolor um, paint quality and durability, what you're going to need is um, something called a binder. And um, for a lot of our artists here, you might, you might've heard of this, you might know what this is already. Um, the binder that I would recommend, or well, first of all, what the binder does, the binder holds those pigments together. So it makes it a little bit more durable. It makes it so that you're not just kind of painting using the water. Um, a great binder, that I, I've used in the past is um, gum Arabic. It's actually made from sap from an acacia tree. So it's natural as well, it's a natural material. And what this is going to do with mixing with whatever pigment you're using is it's gonna hold that pigment together and make it a little bit more durable on your paper. Now gum Arabic, um, the one thing I do remember about it is it's um, not the easiest to find. You can find it online and in specialty art stores, of course. Um, if you go into if you go into like Michael's or Joanne's, I remember not being able to find it. So, um, but that is a great tool that you can use that you can buy from a lot of different places. Um, and then honey, which you can just get from your kitchen, that mixes to make the solution easier to paint with. So the ratios of this can be an experiment themselves, like we mentioned. Um, the ratio that I know to use, or at least to start with is a ratio of three to one to one to one. And what that means is basically you use three units of your pigment. So whatever you're painting with, one unit of gum Arabic, one unit of honey, and one unit of water. And that is for dry pigments. So for example, if we were say using the paprika, which I used as the example earlier, you would want to get, um, just three parts, so maybe three teaspoons of paprika, um, put it into your bowl, and then you'd use one teaspoon of your hot water um, and then drain it through the sieve. And then, um, then you'd use one, or one teaspoon of your gum Arabic and one teaspoon of your honey. And if you wanted more paint, you'd maybe go up to um, six teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of hot water, two teaspoons of gum Arabic, and then two teaspoons of honey. And that is kind of um, what you can start with. And again, just like I mentioned, it is an experiment. So you'll want to experiment with the ratios, um, see what you can create, but that's a way for your, um, that's a way to kind of make your pigments a lot more durable. And what you can do with this after is actually that, um, that paint that you'll make using this method, it does dry out. But um, once it dries out, you just put it somewhere where you can store it in. Um, you can buy like watercolor palettes for making your own watercolors. You have it dry out in there. And then when you want to paint with it again, you can actually just take that, um, take whatever you stored it in and just add water. So add a little bit of water, just whether from your brush, um, just like your watercoloring from a store-bought watercolor set. Um, you just add water to that solution you made that's dried out, and then you can paint with it again. All right, so that's it kind of for the basics of nature painting. Um, that is how to get you started. Now what this is, is kind of, this is the activity portion. So for those of you who are able to get materials, I welcome you to try out some of these methods. Um, just try out experimenting with it. Of course, this is also a great place for if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. And we do have a little bit of time left. I want to thank everybody who was able to join. Of course, if you want to stay with us and paint a little bit, you are more than welcome to. We will, have, um, we will also allow you to share whatever you create here. If you want to share it at the end, we'll give you a little bit of time. 
but I was glad everybody to was able to make it. I hope you learned a little bit about how to get started with painting using natural materials. Um, we were the environmental volunteers and thank you. So there were a few questions. Yeah, let me. Computer, computer froze up a little bit there. So I will stop the recording now as well. <laughs>